Hi, this is Shady Atia, professor at Liège University, and today's presentation is about data collection in observational research. The presentation is a part of a playlist on observational research. It's very important to watch previous videos. Now, there are five research families in research. One of them is observational research. And what distinguishes observational research is that it is non-manipulative. So in this context, I'm going to present how to collect data for this specific family of research. The objective of the presentation is to enhance your capacity to conceptualize and design the data collection process and formalize the acquisition of your data and the statistical test and analysis that you would like to perform and for sure to make sure to achieve a high quality data set. I'm going to talk about the difference between primary and secondary data, this data sampling framework, the data collection methods, the data types, the data quality, and the data processing before some takeaway messages. Let's start with the introduction. What is data actually? Well, data is the new oil, and we can see that data allow us to steer our way through a complex world to make decisions. So it's so important and it's very crucial for any decision maker today and for researchers. When we talk about data, there is two types of data, quantitative and qualitative data. But in observational research, we are mainly concerned with quantitative data. And as you know, when we start to do our data collection plan, we need to make sure that we, uh, we are involving those four stages. Well, we have a data collection, which is the process of gathering and measuring information on variables of interest in an established systematic fashion. And it is the first step that needs to be conducted before performing any research. Even sometimes people start their research and the data set is already present. So it's important to make sure if you are conducting research to make sure that you have a data set. And if not, and you will include the data collection as part of your research, that you have enough knowledge about this step. Now, data are typically uh, numbers and the results of counts or measurement, but can be also from other processes. And raw data appear to be uh, in the form of pictures, words, or even electronic uh, or acoustic signs, thus satellite images uh, or other representations. And the data has to uh, be transformed typically into numbers and must be associated with some meaning. Now, statistical data is important and it has a certain nature. Well, it needs to be representative, it needs to be testing relationship, identify trends over time, make sense of large data, and in this sense, inductive, up to date, uh, has a geographical coverage, uh, is measuring instrument needs to be reliable, so the tool or the way I'm measuring it is reliable, and for sure, data is costly, so it will cost time, and it will cost money, and therefore it will need a time budget and a money budget. Now, when we look at observational research, by default, it's looking to describe and to test, and therefore we will have large number of units or large number of subjects that we will collect data about, and we will have also large number numbers of variables. Now, let's move to the second part of the presentation and distinguish primary and secondary data. Well, primary data is obtained firsthand. It's simply questionnaires or measurement. While secondary data, it is data that is collected by somebody other than the user or other than the researcher. And secondary data refers to data that have already been collected for some other purposes, and yet such data may be useful for one's research purpose. And when we talk about secondary data, here we are analyzing the results of several existing studies, and then we can do meta-analysis, for example, so this is the advantage of using secondary, secondary data. And we look at comparing units over time, and therefore it is used a lot for comparative or for historical research. And also secondary data is considered as uh, quantitative data that requires statistical analysis. Now, one of the important criteria is when we select uh, secondary data as a source for our research, that the dataset collection needs to be done using variables that makes the study unique. Also, we need to make sure that the authors provide the scientific protocol for collecting and creating the dataset. And we need also to look that the analysis adds significant value to these data. So this is very important that your analysis that you will perform will add a high value to this data. Those are the main criteria that make somebody select a secondary data set in order to perform their study. 
Another important way of classification data is that we distinguish primary, primary data from secondary data. Well, primary quantitative data collection methods involve mechanical or human uh, data collection types. When we talk about mechanicals here, we are looking at devices that are collecting the data for us. Or when we talk about humans, then we are talking here about survey applications, whether we are using interviews or questionnaires. But when we talk about secondary quantitative data collection methods, we are looking mainly for existing data sets where we are referring to internet or open sources, documents, articles, reports, and so on that are found in public repositories and that we are looking to in online or in a physical format to process them. Now, the third important point of uh, data collection is to have a data sampling framework. And allow me to explain you what is a framework. A framework is a group of uh, descriptions that will describe our sampling technique. So we need to define the target population, the data sources that we will work, the coverage, the exclusions that we will have. This is the first point. Also, we need to have some description about the sample representativity. We need also to talk about the sampling method and the frame that is used. We need to talk about the sampling precision, which is mainly referring to the size of our sample. And we need to talk about the population variance and the sample marginal error in the sense of calculating the outcome statistics and the standard errors related to our sample. And finally, we need to talk also about the sample distribution. Those seven items, they form your sampling framework. And you need to develop, develop your sampling framework in a very clear way and describe each of those sub-items to make sure that you have a proper uh, sampling framework. And let me give you some examples of some sampling methods. It could be random or pur purposive sampling, like the simple random sample or the systematic sample. It could be stratified sample, cluster sample, snowball sampling. There's different sampling techniques, but as you can see, the sampling method will be one of the ways or the point number three within your sampling framework. So one of the essential steps when we are conducting observational research is to inquire about your sampling framework because there we will find answers to, those, to all these questions, including the sampling methods and also including how you will perform your statistical analysis. So since we are collecting data for statistical analysis, we need to define also uh, how to perform statistical analysis or data analysis. Well. Statistical analysis or data analysis is the process of collecting data about a group or subjects or objects to draw conclusion about population of the subject. Statistics involves the collection, description, analysis uh, and inference of conclusions from quantitative data and by that we can move to the next step of the data collection methods. Well, we talked earlier about data collection methods, whether they are primary data sets or if they are secondary data sets. But if we talk about something else here is the observation type. What will be the observation type? There are actually two main observation types, either mechanical or human. As you can see, this is a human observation type, a person or a, a human or a doctor or a nurse is collecting data through surveys. Uh, and here we talk about human data collection because we are using a questionnaire for that. Another way could be simple questionnaires that are filled by the user themselves and you are using paper format or other format, but still here humans are involved in collecting the data itself. Another way here could be also by going samples, by collecting samples on field, by using devices that will measure for us the sample. This could be considered as the data collection done by human, but the processing is done mechanically in lab tests. Also here we can have mechanical data collection technique by introducing loggers or smartphones or devices or in a nutshell sensors. Those sensors are collecting the data for us and they are communicating through internet to make sure that we have a server cloud to access this data in real time. So it's important when we are defining our data collection technique is to define what will be the observation type. Another third way here is to use existing data set and in this sense what we will do, we will refer to published repositories or online repositories or data set or uh, articles uh, or reports and extract from these existing data sets the information from tables or from these publications and by that we are relying on secondary source data but this is done through uh, investigating or visiting public repositories or online. 
Now let's move to the fifth part of today's presentation, which is the data types. Actually, what are the types of data that we can collect? Well, we have different data types. Need, we need to first know what is a variable, which is a characteristic of the population or a sample that is of interest of the researcher. And here we need to have number of infections, for example, or we can talk about time of a service, how long it will stay. So this is the variable. And then we need to distinguish the variable from the data. What is the data? The data is the actual values of the variables. And here it could be nominal data that is categorically observation or interval data as numerical observations or ordinal data which are ordered categoric uh, through categorical observations or could be ratio data. When we talk about nominal data, which is simply uh, the values of nominal data are categories and they are also called categorical data, for example, responses to questions about martial uh, status and they can be coded as single, which will take number one, married, number two, divorce, number three, widowed, number four. So this is called nominal data. And here we have categorical values without order. We are just associating specific responses with specific number. In this case, we call that nominal data. Then we can have the interval data. What is interval data? Actually, it is real numbers. They are real numbers communicating real values. We're talking here about your height, your weight, uh, the price of something. Also, it refers to as numerical data. And here we can use arithmetic operations that can be performed uh, on interval data. Thus, it is meaningful to include the values in equations, not like nominal. Nominal data, we can use not use them in this case. So here we have meaningful differences between values and we can execute them in equations to measure the mean and so on. And this is uh, uh, an, an example. Then we have ordinal data and ordinal data, it is appearing to be categorical in nature, but their values have an order. So we are ranking them in a different way. So we say, for example, college scores rating between poor, fair, good, very good, uh, excellent. So we have actually ordinal uh, categorization and the answer will correspond for to a specific ordinal uh, evaluation so the categorical values are ordered but not comparable in the numerical size and we cannot add them up and this is called ordinal data this could be used mainly in surveys and in questionnaires and then we have the fourth type of data which is the ratio data and here we're talking about uh, ratio data that classifies and ranks data and uses measured continuous interval just like interval data however unlike interval data uh, the ratio data has a true zero so here we are talking about speed age weight uh, are all excellent examples since none can have a negative value and you cannot uh, be 10 years old or weigh uh, minus, minus 10 years old or weigh minus 160. So the, this is very close to um, uh, the, the previous uh, interval data, but with the difference was the ratio that it is related to the zero and then we cannot go under the zero. And this uh, is meaningful point when we start with a zero and allows us to have differences if we want to calculate differences. So it's important to distinguish those four types uh, of or levels of measurements so that when you design your survey or when you start to collect your data mechanically you define the, the, the levels of measurement whether they are nominal, ordinal, uh, interval uh, or uh, ratio uh, type of measurement. Now let's move also to another important aspect which is the data quality. I need to make sure that I have a data quality and I need to make sure that if I have incomplete data, what I'm going to do? So a data set which does not have quality problems of some kind can be very suspicious. If you report in your data and you don't have any reporting on uh, the data quality, either you are ignorant, you, you, you missed it, or there is something wrong. And uh, when we talk about data, we need to look at the three C's. We need to make sure that we went through cleaning process. We need to, that we went through a completion process and a correction process and a data set is incomplete if some of the observations are missing and therefore a selection uh, bias and weak representation are a sort of incomplete data so it's very important to look at those 
aspects when you are collecting your data. And as you can see, when we start a data collection, one of the most important steps after is to work on cleaning the data. So we try to look for basics, outliers, and missing information. In the basics, we look if there is redundant samples, for example, redundancy, we need to avoid it. If there is redundant feature, also we need to avoid it, and we can directly correct our um, tables and data sets. If there are outliers, where they are happening? Is this a measurement error? Is there an issue? Somebody added a, a wrong uh, number additionally. Instead of saying it is 1000 kilometers, in reality it was only 100 uh, kilometers and there is an additional zero to the number. So these are the outliers. I need to understand what happens and if not, I have to uh, correct them. And if there is missing data, either I can mark them or I can impute them, and this is also part of cleaning your data. So this has to be done in the computer, in your spreadsheet, and you need to structureize, organize the data and make sure that you describe it and describe this process of cleaning, because when you start it, it will be uh, part of your uh, uh, data uh, management uh, process and we have difficulties to define parameters or indicators in a consistent way for example we have problems with a crime rate for example we can have also mistakes with reading the instrument or recording values sometimes the instrument is placed wrong not in the right position not in the best functional operation guidance so we can have inaccurate uh, a telescope for example readings sometimes the units of the measurement are wrong we are using British measurement units or international uh, units uh, we are missing messing up with the day months year uh, we have issues with that it happens a lot in measurements and therefore it's very important to uh, uh, check the error propagation so errors can be propagated uh, with serious consequences and it's very important to uh, check the error propagation now once we're done with the cleaning of the data we can start now to do the data pre-processing uh, what we do with the data pre-processing? Well, it's involving data cleaning, completion. We can examine the data, identify the outliers, check for errors and reduce the numbers, correcting the errors if possible, discard any complete record, selection, uh, looking at the selection bias distortion. We can do imputation by inserting substitute values based on different techniques. And the best solution to minimize the problem during the data collection phase is to start to complete this data. When we look at completing the data, like I mentioned, we start at cleaning it and we start to use statistical software to convert the data into readable format. But one of the most important steps here is to start coding the data. So we need to associate the results with the different types of measurement that we have and the different type of uh, values. And then we are only then ready to start to go to the next step of data analysis. Well, some takeaway, because this is the end of today's presentation of data collection in observational research. Well, data collection requires careful planning and post-processing to be uh, of high quality. Also, there are three types of data collection techniques that exist. Like we said, mechanical or human for primary data collection, and we have online or through physical for secondary data. Strike a balance or strike a suitable compromise between the amount of the data and the cost of collecting it. This is very important. This is responsibility of uh, uh, researchers. And if you don't have experience, you need to contact experienced researchers. Data has to be clean, complete, and correct. So there is no problem to complete missing information. There is no problem to impute. There is no problem at all to um, describe the problems of your data. But what is important is that you do a transparent description and mention how did you clean the data, how did you prepare it, so that when you are moving to the next step, you have uh, well ready uh, to analysis uh, data without having problems afterwards. And for sure, a selection bias and a weak representation are a very common sort of incomplete data. So make sure that you avoid those two mistakes, the weak representation or the uh, selection bias that are very commonly uh, in observational research. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. Today's presentation is on data collection as part of observation research. I invite you to watch following videos and thank you very much for your attention. Today's presentation was about data collection in observation research.